Hi everyone, Mark here again, and this time we're going to be building a DIY gimbal controller for any of the Alex Mospace 3-axis gimbals. And I know you're probably thinking like, wait a minute, didn't we just build one of these a few months ago? And we did, actually, this is the one that I built, and it used the joystick and buttons to do all kinds of cool things. We're doing something a little bit different this time. This is the one we're building. It actually has a 3-axis accelerometer and gyro inside of it. So technically, it'd be like a motion controller. So when it connects to an Alex Mos gimbal, However you move it, the gimbal will move to match those motions. Very cool. Allows you to do shots that are a little bit more hard, more difficult with a joystick, like if you're tracking a vehicle or something like that. This is a lot easier. Now, these are really different tools, like a Phillips head screwdriver and a flat head screwdriver. You really kind of want both. I wouldn't just build one or the other. This one's a little bit more expensive to build. This one's actually cheaper. This one's a lot easier to build. This one actually is more complicated. You're gonna need a soldering iron and other things, so be forewarned about that. Both work with any Alex Mos-based Bluetooth three-axis gimbal. So whether it's a big DSLR rig, a little handheld, a quadcopter, it really doesn't matter. It'll work with any of those. Really unlocks a whole new realm of options when it comes to shooting with any of these gimbals. So with that, let's get building. To show how it works, I've got the gimbal held in place on a fixed mount. Just turn it on and you should see the Bluetooth light flashing to indicate it's waiting for connection. Next, turn on the motion gimbal controller and wait for them to link to each other. Once the light is solid on the gimbal, then the two are connected, but it takes a couple of seconds for everything to get synced. You'll typically see the camera move slightly when this happens, and then you should be ready to rock and roll. As you can see, it's about as intuitive as it gets. The gimbal will match whatever orientation you have the controller in. To be clear, the gimbal is not pointing at what the controller is. It's matching how you're holding it in pitch, roll, and yaw. You can reset the zero point for the controller by simply pushing the button on the front. This sets the camera back to its zero point and can be helpful to make sure the orientation of the controller is where you want it. Even though it isn't actually tracking what you're pointing it at, you can use it in a very similar fashion. Here's a quick example of what I'm talking about. It works particularly well when tracking vehicles or people or any other moving object. If you don't want roll, you can either make a gimbal mode without roll input or modify the code to not send roll. Finally, here's just a quick test of range. I'm at about 60 feet away and no problems with any of the control. So now into the fun part, building this little beast. Here are the three main components to the system. The main computer for the project is an Adafruit Trinket Pro, specifically the 3 volt version. This is really just a small, inexpensive Arduino system, but with the logic running at 3.3 volts instead of 5 volts. This works better with all the other parts we're using in the project. Next is the HC05 Bluetooth module. Now there are a whole bunch of different people making these. The only thing to make sure is that you get the 05 and not the 06, because the 05 can operate in master mode. Finally is the MPU 6050 3-axis gyroscope and accelerometer module. This is what does all the heavy lifting of detecting how you're holding the controller and translates that into something usable by the Arduino. First things first, you'll need to solder on all the pin headers. The only thing to keep in mind is that the FTDI pins on the Arduino should be up and not down. The next step is to assemble everything on a breadboard. This is what it should look like, but more detailed images are on the webpage linked below. We're doing this to not only make sure the wiring is correct, but also to make sure that all the parts are received are in good working order. This orange wire is what is hooked up to the zero button, so I just have it here as a placeholder. Now hook up the Arduino to the PC using the FTDI cable. Make sure it is a 3.3 volt cable and not a 5 volt cable. Also make sure the black and green wires match to the writing on the board. The first thing we'll be uploading is the MPU 6050 calibration software. And let me say that the guy who wrote this definitely deserves a high five. Follow the instructions that appear on the screen Every MPU 6050 is slightly different, and this difference means that they will slowly drift or misrepresent their position unless calibrated. Once this is completed, it will give you the initial values to set for your device. Copy these into the clipboard and then open up your gyromos.c source file. Locate this section in your code and replace the values with the ones from the calibration you just performed. The order of the values matches the order they appear in the code, but try to be a little bit more careful entering the values than I was. You'll only need to do this once, so don't worry about it after this. You will also need to set up the Bluetooth controller to be linked to your gimbal, but this process is almost identical to my previous DIY controller, so watch that video if you're unfamiliar. Finally, you'll upload the gyromos.c software and we'll see if everything is working correctly. You should see some generic debug information in the serial monitor like this. When this happens, then turn on the gimbal. 
Once the LED on the gimbal turns solid and the red LED on the Arduino lights up, they're connected and you'll start to see data being displayed much faster. You should also be able to move the breadboard and the gimbal should move to match it. Assuming that worked, now we're on the home stretch. I'm using a proto board for this project, so pay particular attention to the direction of the solder pads in relation to the pins. You don't want them bridging pins together. That's what's known in the business as bad. It's Tetris time. You'll need to figure out the best positions for all the parts. Here's where I chose to put them, but keep in mind that if you change it, you may need to change the software as well. Solder all the parts to the proto board, and then let's check out the case. Because we're going to the edge with some of these parts, we need to trim out some of the box to make sure everything fits. Make sure to trim away the excess material to the case, stopping it from coming together tightly. Now we need to prepare the front panel for the switch and button. Here's your laser cutter tip of the day. I first cut out a template in paper because it's cheaper and to make sure everything is positioned and sized correctly. Then I use the cutout portion of the paper as a guide for the plastic. Voila, a perfect precision fit. The button and switch block the proto board, so next we'll need to trim away some of its excess material. Now it's time to wire everything up. I typically like to put jumpers on the pins first as a visual helper for wiring. It also gives a simple way to double check the logic before you start soldering things down for good. Once you're satisfied, then remove each wire one at a time and solder down the permanent one. Then wire up the on off switch and reset buttons on the top and we're virtually done. Now is a great time to turn it on and test that everything is working as expected. Assuming that it is, it's time to close up the box. I attach this gun grip to the bottom, but it's up to you whether or not to do it. It's completely up to preference, and ironically, it's one of the most expensive parts of this build. I just use double adhesive tape to attach it, since the whole thing is very light and it holds together more than enough. Well, that was a little more complicated than I would have liked, but it's about the best I could do. Hopefully, it was simple enough that you could follow along and get your own motion controller working. So with it, you know, now your Alex Mos is, it unlocks a whole new level of possibilities with it. A lot of fun. As always, I've got more DIYs coming, tutorials, shootouts, cool stuff like that. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, YouTube love is always appreciated. Like and comment if you have any questions. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing any cool new videos you guys make.